Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. It is a beautiful day in the neighborhood. <laughs> Am I trying to convince myself? You can't hear me? Mechanical failure. There you go. Good morning. Yeah, that's right. I couldn't hear you either. We weren't turned on yet this morning. But now we are. Before we get started, are there any announcements? Yes, Julie. Um, oh, what was I announcing? <laughs> <laughs> Community Outreach Committee is having a Friendsgiving dinner, Thanksgiving Friendsgiving, um, uh, November 13th during brigade night. Um, the council, the community will be um, supplying ham and turkey, and then we'll have a potluck for the rest, and we'll have sign-up sheets next week. Okay. And I'm going to bring squash. Okay. <laughs> and there's a story behind that. Okay. Butternut. Butternut is the best. <laughs> Wait. Is the council meeting at the church today? Yes, Betty. We're in need of uh, prayer shawls. Anybody that can knit or crochet, we're out of them. Oh. Uh, Becky and I have been making them one at a time for different ones, but. Um, we could use some extras. If anybody needs a pattern, uh, let me know, and I will get it for you. But the rule is in groups of three, um, <coughs> meaning the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So when you're making your, your row to start your chain, you want it to end divided by three. And going lengthwise, the same thing, divided by three. And she's going to start giving lessons on December 1st. <laughs> because you lost me. You, I bet you could. Anybody else? Julie. I forgot another one. Um, I said a butcher has not been feeling well, been under the weather. Um, we decided to have a car, car shower for her. There are labels on the back table for her, if anybody would like to send her a card and cheer her up. Okay. If there are no other announcements, then Ben will open us with the prelude, Take My Life and Let It Be.
if you join me in our call to worship on the screen and in your bulletin. We thank you, God, <coughs> for the gift of this day. For this beautiful space, for the warm hearts that greet us. We thank you, God, for the ability to come together to worship. For songs and prayers that sustain us. We come from all walks of life, the rich, the poor, the struggling, and the secure. And God calls us all. We bring our hearts to this time and place, hearts holding joy and sorrow, questions and wonders. And God knows us. We offer what we have to give, our talent, our imperfections, our faith and our doubt, our hope and our hands to serve. And God loves us. God. If you would stand with me, hymn number 84, this is the day we will sing all three verses. <laughs>
may be seated. Take my life and let it be. We will sing four verses. Words are on the screen. <coughs> That's a good mama. Do you got to clean your room? Do you have to vacuum? No? Bring in the milk. That tells you how old this is. <laughs> Kids don't even know what that even means. In the olden days, even before your mom was born, the milk used to get delivered and they put it in this box that was, would keep it cold until you got home and brought it in. Does that sound gross? <laughs> okay, we don't have to bring in the milk, but I'll give you that one. Do you have to clear the table after dinner? No. Uh oh. No poop scooping? <laughs> this is horrible, but I was like, well, that's the third one down and the third one over. <laughs> <laughs> Complete your schoolwork? You better. Do you have to read? Or do you like to read? Do you read a lot? Okay, we'll give you that one. Do you have to clean the bathroom? That's the worst job. Take out the trash? Who does that? Robert. 
You don't have a dog. You don't have a cat. You don't have a fish. Do you brush your teeth? Or do you not do that for you? Do you put your dirty clothes in the laundry or are they all over the floor? No. Do you have to put your laundry away? No. You don't have to walk the dog. That one doesn't count. I thought the next one was weird. Tidy the front door. Dwayne probably said, if you come to my house, that it's not really tidy at the back door because I kick off my shoes. Mm -hmm. And there's shoes everywhere. But that's one I should do, but I don't. <coughs> you get yourself dressed. Your mom doesn't dress you. Do you take a nap? I did yesterday. Mm -hmm. I thought, I'm really tired working on the sermon. So I thought, I'm going to go lay down and get refreshed. And I set it for a half an hour. And it went off and I hit restart. And I did it twice. I actually did it a third time. <laughs> so I took a nap. And you don't have to mop the kitchen. Mm -hmm. <gasps> you do? Whoa. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. You got 33%. <laughs> that means your mom does the other 67%. Um, or Robert. So we're pretty lucky. But there's things that aren't on this list that I wanted on there. Like, are you kind to kids at school? If someone didn't have a lunch, do you pack? You do? Would you get something in there that your mom put in there that you don't like? Yeah, I, I used to do that. So there's things, and that's what we're talking about in the sermon today, is to believe it, to do it, and live it. And if your mom asked you to help do one of those things, if she asked you to wash the dishes, you would do it, wouldn't you? But, well, I wish I had eyes on the back of my head, but I don't know why. So I can see your mom. But there's things that God wants us to do that aren't on this list. And we just need to do it when God tells us to be kind to somebody. So that's it. You want to, should I take another, send another one home for you? So your mom can add things to your list? Absolutely. <laughs> I'll give her one too. In case you just decide to rip that up. <laughs> Let's pray. Dear God, I thank you for this day and for the many things that... We have to do in this world that we don't really like to do. And then there's things that you lay on our heart that we know we need to do. So I pray that you will help us all each and every day to become more like you and be people who make things happen and who do things to be kind to other people, we pray. Amen. Bring in the milk. <laughs> go get the milk from the cooler. Go. Yeah. <coughs> when I was a kid, it was go help milk the cows. <laughs> it's now time for the sharing of our joys and our prayer concerns. Does anybody have anything they want to share with the congregation? Betty. Um, several. One, um, Bill Freshwater and Debbie, uh, their son in Orlando, uh, his family has come through the hurricane fine. I haven't heard from my friend Karen, who is a designated uh, hurricane shelter. So, and she was in the path of it, so I haven't heard from her. Um, yesterday, my aunt was sent to Cleveland Clinic by ambulance with a brain aneurysm. I haven't heard anything as to how she's doing. <coughs> My brother-in-law, Frank Sands, um, he just doesn't seem to be getting any better, so he needs lots of prayers. And there were others, but I'll just... What's your aunt's name? Dolly. Oh, and Wilma is still holding her own. <laughs> wow. Anybody else? I saw a bunch of hands go up, and now they're all gone. Rose. Uh, my grandson and 
and his mom, who lived in Florida, and they texted us and said they were fine. The electricity for a while, but they kind of missed the biggest part of the hurricane. Thank you, Rose. Diane. Um, if we could say prayers for Momo, and uh, it's Mike's son's brother-in-law, and uh, he's, uh, they're calling him hospice, and it's so sad because it breaks my heart. He's only in his 30s, and he had three children, six, four, and two. So if we could really just say prayers, but he has a peaceful. Momo? Momo. 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 Yes, Elaine. I just lost a friend um, to battling cancer. Um, she leaves behind um, two boys, and I think she had eight to nine great grands and probably five grands. But she she finally uh, was suffering no more. Um, happy note, my brother and his family were found. What was your friend's name? My friend, her name was Twyla. Thank you. <coughs> she was from Amherst. Beth or Dwayne, I know one of you had your hand up. Uh, okay. Ross had a concert last week uh, for raising money for the people down south in uh, Greenville, and uh, he raised uh, $1,075, and that's going to the Blessed Heart. Uh, it's a church organization down there that helps people on the ground. And so that was pretty good for just one person playing the guitar and singing and one night. So no problem. Very good. Julie. I have two joys. Um, first of all, Dennis's uh, skin cancer surgery came out successful. And no, I didn't hit him in the air. <laughs> And my <coughs> uncle and cousins in Sarasota, Florida are safe and sound, no electricity, but they're safe. Okay, Elaine. Prayer for my cousin Ted Denison, who's been moved to yet another Alzheimer's unit um, in Youngstown, Ohio. He became combative. Okay. Anybody else? Good to have you back, Paula. Thank you. I'm actually leaving again next week. I'll be going down to see my brother in Virginia. He's going to have a big surgery on October 28th. So family's going down to the fire den, and we have taken the time to get set for our surgery on the 28th. So if we could keep Wes Rommel in the prayers for the surgery. <coughs> okay, and Donna. <coughs> Guardians will be playing in the American League Championship Series on Monday night at 7.38. We take on the New York Yankees. Go Guardians! Yay! Yeah. Go Who said go drive? That's me. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's a rebel in every UCC church. <laughs> yes, Elaine. It's a joy. My birthday's tomorrow. We're making it to 52. <laughs> It is. Well, 
if they're, oh, I would ask you to continue to keep the Jackson and Sanghas families in your prayers. Um, we had the funerals for that family this week and it, they were very well supported, but no matter how many or how few people are around, it's the next 10 days just start to go. <sighs> so continue to keep them in your prayers. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we do come to you today and we're thankful for the much needed rain. And as we sang, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. I hear us sing it with joy in our hearts. And I think of the people in Florida and the Carolinas that um, found that very hard to say in the last week. And so I just, we are thankful that the deaths that um, resulted in the hurricanes, the fires, the everything were minimal, but they are still losses. And we are thankful that people heeded warning and took shelter. And so we are thankful for those that were lost and have been found, those that are without electricity, those that are without a home now. We just pray that you will give them strength in the days and months and year ahead as they rebuild or, or move or whatever it is that they choose to do, that you would be with them. We do pray for those that have had surgery or are going to have surgery this week. We just pray that you'll be with the doctors as they meet the needs. For those that are seeking treatment, we just pray that that treatment would be Bring them comfort in the days ahead. For those that have lost loved ones in the days in the past or that are struggling with a, the, the decline of a loved one, we pray that you would give those families strength in the days ahead. For those that are getting ready to leave, to go on a vacation, to spend time with family, or to go back to Italy again. I just pray that you will keep us safe and return us back to our church to fellowship with one another. For the guardians, and we just thank you for the, just the excitement that that creates in our communities and in our state, and I just pray that you'll be with them as they continue on to represent our state. And now let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our words of grace this morning. <coughs> We meet as family, as brothers and sisters in Christ, accepting the responsibility that this places upon us. We meet as lights in the dark world and pray that through our words and our actions, others might be drawn into your family. In a universe that seems so immense, it's so easy to feel insignificant, yet we have the ability to make a difference we remain in awe of the one who has created all things and dedicate this time to serve. Thanks be to God. Now Ben will present the musical offering, This Day of Joy and Gladness.
Our first scripture reading is from Psalms 90, 12 through 17. Teach us to number our days, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Relent, Lord, how long will it be? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love, that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Make us glad for many days, for as many days as you have afflicted us, for as many years as we have seen trouble. May your deeds be shown to your servants, your splendor to their children. May the favor of the Lord our God rest on us, establish the work of our hands for us. And then in Mark chapter 10, verses 17 through 23. As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. Teacher, he declared, all these I have kept since I was a boy. Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said. Go, sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At this the man's face fell. <coughs> he went away sad because he had great wealth. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is. For the rich to enter the kingdom of God.
was a college professor who had a class and he decided that he was going to prove to his class that God did not exist. And he said, if God exists, I'm going to give him 15 minutes to knock me off this platform. And if it doesn't happen, where is God? Where is he in times of trouble? So as the clock started ticking, with every passing moment, he taunted God, saying, God, if you're out there, you're running out of time. I'm here. I'm still waiting. At that very moment, a 300-pound football player was going down the hallway and heard this professor's claim that God, if he didn't knock him off in 15 minutes the platform, God didn't exist. So the football player goes running down the hall, running in the classroom, and just tackles him off the platform. And the professor just, just shocked. And he's like, why did you do that? He's like, as I was going down the hall, God spoke to me and said, I don't have time for people like that. Could you take care of it and show them that God exists and he works in mysterious ways? Well, God does work in mysterious ways. And Last week, everything that Paul said is 100% the truth. I called him to ask him, I said, would you just be prepared to fill in in case my flight's delayed or anything like that? And he said, let me think about it. And then he called the next day. He left me a message that said, I will under one condition. I will come, I will preach whether you're there or not, and I just want you to sit in a pew and enjoy church. But... As he was talking, I think as all ministers do or teachers do, you get ideas. <coughs> and I loved his topic of hospitality. And it does go very good with believe it, do it, and live it. And it reminded me of a story that happened to me in Italy two weeks ago. I always stay pretty much in one of two hotels in every city in Italy. And this time, number one, two, and three were not available. So I had to take a group of people who I just like to have a certain standard. I had to pick a new hotel. 
and you guys were with me when we stayed at Genusi Palazzo, which was the Cadillac, Mercedes, I don't know what, of hotels in every aspect, their service. So I now, that is my new standard, and I had to pick a new hotel. So I picked this hotel that was in the vicinity, just across the street from the Inlaid Wood store. But days before we got to that town, I started looking at some things. It didn't have an elevator. And then I noticed that they don't serve breakfast. And I was like, oh my gosh, I just want to hide. But God works in mysterious ways. We get there, there were only two rooms that weren't on the ground floor, and I had very able-bodied people to do that. But the big surprise of it was the owner, who really wasn't the owner, he's the grandson of an owner, was absolutely fabulous. It was the best surprise. It's totally changed the way I look at that town because we had a personal concierge the entire time we were awake. And he believed in his town. He was born in the Netherlands. His grandparents lived in Sorrento, and that's where he lived every summer. He loved, I mean, getting out of school and going to another country for the summer. He loved it. He believed it, and he wanted to show us the best version one street over, one street back of that whole main drag. There's a whole other part of Sorrento that I never knew existed. And I think when we look at our life and we look at God and we think, we know the perfect way. And then God throws you a little curveball and you're like, oh no, I just want to hide. And then he shows you the greatest blessing in what you think was a big mistake. And that's how this sermon was today. What must I do was in our lectionary calendar, and I usually do try to use that as the subject. It has the Bible verses that go along with it. And today it is, what must I do? How many of you know any Bible verses that start out that way? I talked to Dwayne about it, and he knew of one. And there's a lot of them. But in Acts chapter 16, it's Paul and Silas are in jail. And one of the convicts says, what must I do to be saved? And Paul says, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. And there are many, many examples. And that is the one that you thought of, right? But our scripture reading for today says, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Same thing. What must I do to be saved? What must I do to inherit eternal life? And what does it say? Something that none of us want to hear. Give away everything you have to the poor. I don't think anybody wants to do that. Everything. The people in Florida lost everything. And those of us that have the opportunity and blessings in life to give to help. But... We aren't going to give everything away. And all of this comes together, and it's, I'm going to back up. Old Testament, New Testament, it sort of says the same thing. It's the resounding theme, give everything you have away to the poor. And it just goes to show that God really just wants to know that we're willing to help. To help those in their time of need. And in the New Testament, it keeps talking about who is your neighbor? Who is your neighbor? And is it the person next door to you? Is it people in your community? Is it the people that are in Florida and South Carolina that are suffering? They are all our neighbors. Who, everybody knows, and I sort of alluded to that, there was a PBS program where the host entered the studio and took off his cardigan sweater. Anybody know who it is yet? It's a beautiful day in your neighborhood. So who were Mr. Rogers' neighbors? It was everybody that had the access to PBS. We also know 
A lot of people's <coughs> neighbors that weren't ours. Because of the age of this group, does anybody know who Dennis Semenis' neighbor was? Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson, Darren and Samantha Stevens. Who were their neighbors? The Kravitzes. How about Laverne and Shirley? Lenny and Squeaky, you guys are good. The Flintstones. The Jeffersons. Mr. Sparkett. Archie Bunker. I should have said it the other way around. Ricky and Lucy Ricardo. Fred and Ethel. So we all know who those famous TV show people's neighbors were. But who is our neighbor? Who is our neighbor? Who is it that we need, what we must do to help? And today, I think it's easier for us to give and help people that are farther away because of our media, our TVs, the news, social media. Our neighbors get farther and farther away, and I think that that's good because we can help people in their time of need. <coughs> there is a story that Claudio, the guy in Sorrento, shared with us, and we were talking about being a Christian and living a Christian life and what other people see. And he had a friend of his that was dying, and he decided to go to church and say a prayer, say prayers for this friend of his that was dying. And he said, I came back, I just got done praying. My heart was heavy for my friend that I was losing. And he said, I had a crabby client who didn't like his room. He wanted the room with a balcony, and all he did on the balcony was smoke. And the guy complained and, complained and said, I want a room with a balcony. And he's like, I just got done praying, and I just wanted to bite this guy's head off. But if we do that, if you said, oh, I just came back from the church praying, and then we bite their head off, what does that show of our Christianity? We have to believe it, do it, and live it. And people are watching us all the time. We are supposed to be the salt of the earth. And I think right now there are the lines of Christianity are sort of blurred. I think there's the people, depending on the denomination that you are with or from, um, what must I do? They would say, Call upon the name of the Lord and thou shalt be saved. But I think that what we must do isn't just call upon the name of the Lord as a fire escape. If we truly are going to be Christian, we have to believe it. But with that belief comes action, and we need to do it. And we need to do it just not once, but we need to do it as a consistent way of life. That is true Christianity. And it's sort of like the Trinity. I'm glad you brought it up today. You can't have one with the other. I can't say, I'm a Christian. I got down on my knees and I prayed and asked God to forgive me and not have fruits of the Spirit, to not have action. We can't be saved by works alone. We can't just be good without God, without Jesus. It takes all three. It takes believing, believing in your heart and loving the Lord thy God, and love your neighbor as yourself, and do it, and live it each and every day. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you for the world that we live in, with its flaws, with its hypocrisy. <coughs> there is so much good out there, though. I pray that you would give us each a desire, each and every day, that we would have the opportunity to share your love with others, that we would go out into the world and be a light, that we would trust in you to help us each and every step of the way, to guide us and direct us in those things that you would have us to do. And there's times where we can't, where we want to, and Lord, help us to know the difference and to seek you and follow you each and every day of our life as we live that light. Amen.
Let's all stand together. Hymn 81, God be with you. Let's sing the first and the third.